Hi, it's Laurie with Positive Things Living. We're doing the A to Z of Christmas craft. It is a collaboration of a whole bunch of crafters, of junk journalers, of artists that is hosted by Rachel and Bella Crafts. We're using papers from Rachel and Bella's Christmas Past A Vintage Journal Kit. Beautiful papers. And I'm here for the number 12. 12, yes. As you might imagine from a partridge in a pear tree, the song, I'm going to do 12 drummers drumming. So to facilitate this, I've created a digital. We have 12 drummers drumming. <laughs> yes, they're flipped, so it makes it, I could only find six individuals, but they're facing different ways, so we can pretend there's 12. And there's also a drum. And I've made it so it's possible to cut it out and just make a simple booklet that's possible. It's possible to cut it out and have an individual. And I'm today I'm going to show you two different ideas of how to put 12 things together. And they're both, I'd call them accordion-ish. Um, one is, <laughs> the first one that I came up with was this garland or accordion booklet. And you can see that, um, yeah, there are 12 all together. And it's become quite, what can I say? What's the first word that comes to mind when you look at this? A little complicated, perhaps? <laughs> It'll make an, I thought at first that it would be able to be put into a journal, but it's a little bulky. So it turns out that it's a wonderful garland. I'm going to put it up for Christmas. <laughs> and I've decorated the back side with some die cuts and the front side with my different soldiers, drummers, drumming. If you did want to use this for a journal, you could journal on the back. That would be great. So you can see they're together, put together with brads, so they swing nicely. And it's quite a free-spirited experience. When I showed my husband the final project this morning, he uh, he just asked me, um, "Where does your 12 start?" And I, and we had a good laugh this morning because you realize, of course, that I've done them backwards. <laughs> so don't do that <laughs> if you make this. And I can go back and I can change the numbers, just put another number over top. But yeah, that's what happens when you craft into the night. So here it is. And if you were to put it in a journal, you could easily make a big pocket and tuck it in. But it's a, for, for my taste, it's a little too bulky. I'll show you how to make it. But I think it's a better garland. So if you want a garland, it's a garland. And in the digitals that I've provided, you can do some fussy cutting and, and cut them out. So you've got drums, you can make, you know, as many as you want. Perhaps you just want to do one, and that's fine also. So, second choice is this accordion booklet, where the pages are accordion folded. And there's 12, so you could journal on one side and have a decoration on the other. And we'll do this together. I'm going to show you how to do both of these. Um, I happen to just draw out 12, dumber, 12 drummers drumming music. So I can decorate my little drummer boy there. And your third choice is to do just a booklet. Um, so print out the page and they're mirrored so that when you just cut one out, it'll come together as a booklet. And then you can decorate with a soldier or a 
drummer and have a booklet for 12 drummers drumming. So those are your three options for this number 12. Okay, just to tell you a little bit about the collaboration that we're doing here. It's, there's an actual giveaway, a physical giveaway on Rach and Bella Crafts. Uh, there, you can look at the first video that they show in their playlist on their YouTube channel. If you wanna craft along, just try some of the crafts from the many participants. Use this hashtag here, A to Z of Christmas craft. And that way everybody will get a chance to see what we're all making. This is some of the ones that I've done from some of the other participants. So we each make it our own. And also there are various giveaways and freebies from collaborators similar um, to mine. I, I prepared this. It's free. You can go over to where I write on positivethanksliving.com and download this PDF for free if you want the, the digitals. Um, and also on this video, if you comment, you'll be entered to win a digital kit of papers. They're not available at this time on Etsy or anywhere else. Only the winner that comments on this video or the other collaborators video have a chance to win those. And they're from Rach and Bella. And I'll choose the winner here and then let Rich and Bella know who that person is and they'll send their special, them, their special di bonus digital pages. So what should you leave a comment as? So here's my question, or you can leave any other comment you want to. Uh, what's your favorite Christmas color combination? Is it the traditional red and green or is it something different? So leave a comment below and you have a chance to win a one person will win the digital created by Rachel and Bella Crafts. So you've probably seen it all over the place. These are all the participants and here we are. We're going to do the number 12. Let's start with this one first. I'll show you how to make this. We're not going to do all 12 because it does take a long time. I cut out a few circles to show you. I'm just going to remove this so it's out of the way. As you can see, I have a piece in the middle between each of the little drummers. And I've used brads. They're small prads, one on either side of each circle. And the key to making this work well is to be careful that you position your brads and your um, middle pieces equally. I'll show you how I did it after 12 of them, or more actually, there were more. <laughs> It took me a little while to figure it out. I realized how best to do it. Now it's possible you could just glue these on. You don't need brads. You don't need the die cuts. Just cut circles, cut squares or rectangles as you choose, and a middle strip. But having them match, having them all equal works the best. So as I position them, for example, here and here. And then I used this little punch, but you can use a regular punch and a regular sized brad also, or glue it as you choose. I'm looking for my pencil right now. So what I did was I just measure, I cut these, I, <clears throat> I folded these in half to make sure that each one 
And because it's a heavier, it's not a full cardstock, but it's definitely heavier than regular copy paper. It doesn't seem to have a problem with bending back and forth because according to the accordion style, you'll be folding it one way or folding it the other way. So I have this, I have this, and I have this. And lining them up so that they are, what I did was I first did the, the middle punch hole making sure that it was centered in each. And here's this one. So I have holes in my connectors. And now I need a hole so that these will all line up. going to go through all, all of them. But as, as you can see, they're, and I want them to be equal in side by side. And I'm eyeballing this, but you could also do this uh, on a mat that has lines or draw it out. It's much more safe to draw it out. I'm doing it kind of dangerously here. All right, so. Now to attach them, as you can see there, the brad side is the same on each one. And this is the tricky part, especially if your dexterity is difficult or you have long nails or you have no nails. <laughs> so through here and then open up the brad. My hands are full of glue and ink as we do. So you can see one goes through here and for time purposes, I'm not being as careful as I, what I was here. Um, and then through here. Yeah, talk amongst yourselves, as Gaelic and Estelle likes to say, <laughs> as I struggle with these brads. And gluing would work also. Don't feel as though you need to have all these um, kinds of implements or, or die cuts. That's the beauty of this crafting experience. We're all unique. We all have unique special um, items in our craft rooms. And sometimes when you're just starting out, there's no items and that's okay too. You have a scissor, you have a um, some paper and some glue and you're free to craft away as your imagination calls you. We, uh, we traveled for five years in an RV, my husband and I, and all of our crafting things either were in storage or um, my daughter, she had them. And she had her own crafting implements also. So when we came home and we moved out of the RV, I thought, okay, let's see what I can start making. And all of her crafting implements came to live at our apartment. So many of the things that you're seeing me work with belonged to my daughter. She so generously shared her things with me. So, 
sometimes if you can meet someone who also crafts, it's fun to experiment with their tools to see if it's something that you would want for your own stash before you purchase them. So, you see how this goes together. I'm actually doing it much more quickly than I did the, uh, the original, but yeah. And I don't want to bore you by taking much longer. So let's just go with these three. So you have the three and what you can do is cut out the uh, drums. I'm looking for my, where my extra ones are that I've cut out. Ah, here they are. So what I tried when I was creating this, you see the curve of the drum? I just put, made sure that each one where the curve met was what I used as my uh, placeholder and glued them down. On the opposite side, the white paper, I just, I, because I'm using both cream and white, I decided to just stress them with ink. So I'll just show you on this one. What I did was, and a piece of paper. So I did green all over. I just took my Distress Ink. I did both, like so. And I mean, you don't have to decorate uh, after you, you've put the circles together, you can decorate. Before you put the circles together, do the brads. There's enough room. So how wide is this circle? Let me just see. It looks like it's about four and a quarter inches, or if you're metric, um, about 11, 11 centimeters wide in width. And the uh, connecting pieces are six centimeters or not quite two and a half inches. Again, having each each one equal is what matters most. So if I were going to use this, what I learned was if I took the glue and this is called art glitter glue. There is no glitter in this glue. It's just the name of the company. And just a general bit of glue here because the top and the bottom show through. Like so. You see how I have my drum there and then I can add my little drummer one drummer. I tried cutting a few out to make sure that there would be time. You can add the drummer and whatever embellishments that you want. From Rachel Bella's Christmas Past Vintage, uh, there are numbers, and that's where I got the numbers that I put on. So I printed some larger, I printed some smaller. And again, according to what fits your needs, maybe you wouldn't put numbers at all, and then you won't run into the same problem I did, putting them backwards. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's one, and you can see it just folds up quite well, like so. And they match, like this one does. So. That's one option, a Christmas garland, or if 
the uh, bulkiness of it doesn't bother you, you can make this into a journaling spot, decorating the back of the circle or the square or the triangle, whichever you choose. So that's one option. Another option is this little booklet. And if you print off the free, the freebie drum image, I added a gold background because the white bothered me. Um, and just cut them out. That works also. And they will match when you cut them out. Now, if I probably would do this on, I'd have the paper back with another of Rachel's papers, because if you see the papers, the colors of the paper, I mean, they, they match the drum quite well, I think, the, the green and the red and such. So if it was backed with one of these papers that you could use this, or you could just, um, use your distressing and give it a bit of a tinge on the outside so that it feels a little more Christmassy. And in the kit, the paper kit from Rach and Bella, there are so many beautiful little designs, uh, fussy cut options and sentiment. Example. You know, you could put something, one of those words in there. I fussy cut this out. Uh, or Santa instead of the drummer. And you could put that inside so that it's something. There's even the 12 days of Christmas, and I can't find it now. I know that I pulled it out but I can't find it but you could put that inside and it becomes a little journal journal card journal something uh, you can attach a glue on a drummer And that's another option. So we go from very complicated and taking a long time to very quick and easy. Just a little bit of fussy cutting, printing off the digital and fussy cutting it. Now, here's your third option. I know, I kind of went overboard, but you know how your brain is when you're thinking about how to do things? Well. Okay, now if I still wanted to have an accordion, but I didn't want it as bulky, how to do that? So this is what I came up with. You've seen this, I'm sure many people have done this. And this paper is from a painter's paper roll. I'm reaching for it right now. I got it on my local hardware store, but it's also available on Amazon. And you can see how light the paper is. So it doesn't have a lot of bulk. And it's fortunate because you can get as long as you want. Uh, you could do this with wrapping paper. You could uh, also glue book pages together. Sometimes uh, dictionaries are very light paper. And obviously, if it doesn't matter to you how bulky it is, then you could just use regular paper also. So we decorate this together. I just glued the front page to a little bit harder cardstock and folded it so that it evenly came together and glued the back page to another piece exactly the same rounded the corners and now we have this so I 
pet cut out. A sized piece of paper to fit there. And it appears to have walked away as sometimes that happens. <laughs> there are so many options from this set of papers from Rach and Bella. This vintage Christmas to decorate with. I, your imagination is the only thing that will stop you from decorating. So let's say we did this. And we have our 12 drummers drumming. And we need a drummer. Who do I want as my drummer, I wonder. So what I'm going to do is just speed this up a little bit so that you don't have to sit here and watch me trying to decide how to do things. And uh, you can watch me decorate. Yeah. So here we go. So as I craft here, I thought I'd just talk a little bit about the 12 drummers drumming. Where is it from? You probably know. It's from the song about the 12 days of Christmas. Where did the 12 days come from or the concept? Originally, it was just a poem and it came from a children's book, probably around 1780. It's called Mirth Without Mischief. And it was about a practicing memorization. The 12 days in the song are the 12 days starting with Christmas Day to the day before Epiphany, January 5th. Twelfth night is defined by the Oxford English Dictionary as the evening of January 5th, the day before Epiphany, which traditionally marks the end of Christmas celebrations. Obviously, we uh, are used to singing it as a carol, and we do it before Christmas. But it's interesting that there are different songs and different words with the different songs, according to where you're located. When I did a little bit of research, you have something similar in Scotland. Uh, different words, three ducks a merry laying, three swans a merry swimming. In the Faroe Islands, uh, it's a Christmas song and the gifts include a feather and geese and sides of meat and four sheep and five cows. In Sweden, it's a similar song and it features a hen and barley seeds and gray geese and stuff like that. And in French, in France, French songs, uh, they have I'm not going to say it because I can't, um, I can't speak in French, but things like wooden branches and ducks flying in the air and white pigeoned and nine horned oxen. So the actual origins and the meaning of the song are unknown, but it's highly probable that, uh, as I said, it, it started as a children's verse to, to memorize a cumulative poem and if you missed something then you had to pay a forfeit sometimes it was a kiss sometimes it was just a, a gift or a uh, something that you granted them <laughs> and what about the items in that song all the different things that we sing about, what would they cost if you were to give it all as a gift today? Believe it or not, there is a bank in North America that does this 
um, they released the Christmas price index, which uses current market rates to calculate the modern day cost of the gifts in the song. Nowadays, so today, if you were going to give all those things in the song, you would expect to pay $38,993.53. And mostly it's because of the seven swans swimming. They together cost $13,125 of the grand total. I wonder what uh, it would cost to hire 12 drummers drumming. Yeah. So, if you remember, I don't know whether you remember the song, the 12 drummers drumming, 11 pipers piping, 10 lords a leaping, 9 ladies dancing, 8 maids a milking, 7 swans a swimming, 6 geese a laying, 5 golden rings, 4 calling birds, 3 French hens, 2 turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. I don't know about you, but I do not have room for all of that stuff. <laughs> So in the, if, if the words of the song sound dated, it's probably because it is. Um, the music and everything is, wasn't introduced until 1909 by the English composer Frederick Austin. He uh, turned Collie into Calling, and he also emphasized the line, Five golden rings. And that's how the carol that we know first started. But, uh, yeah. And I'm continuing to decorate. What I'm doing right now is the die cut. It's a Sizzix die cut. Two molds. I'll list it below. I'm going to try and list everything that I can think of below. So if you're interested in, in what I'm using. And the numbers, adding the different numbers according to making sure, trying to make sure that they're all in the right order. <laughs> That's important too. I'll just let you watch for a little bit and uh, maybe I'll do another little voiceover before we're finished. Don't worry, I won't make you watch all nine or twelve. I'll probably skip some. So you can, or skip filming so you can uh, just see the end product. And here I am just finishing up 9, 10, 11, and 12. The images that I'm using for the drummer's drumming are from postcards. I was able to use some, digitally remove them from their backgrounds and then provide them here for you to download. All the postcards are prior to 1920, so yeah, they're copyright free. And I think the colors go well with Rage and Bella Crafts Digital. I'm trying to decide where to use the 12 days of Christmas. I think I save it for the end appropriately, I think. <laughs> Adding these little sentiments was fun. All of these drummers drumming were soldiers from different um, British battalions, I think. On the postcard, sometimes they detailed where they were from. I had to include a few that had the uh, tartan, the kilts. I don't know whether you realize or not, my last name is Ferguson, so my husband's family as of Scottish origin, so we have fun with that. Someday I'm determined to get 
my husband and my son and our grandson into kilts just to see what they would look like. This is a Sizzix dye. Foliage, green foliage for uh, Christmas style foliage. I think that one's holly. And we're at 12. Yes, it took a little while to finish this up. There's still the back to decorate if I decide to go back and decorate that. You can find all kinds of things that will be um, listed below in the description of this video. All of the participants, all the collaborators to this large group, I think there's more than 30, could be about 34 of us. All the letters and the numbers, 1 to 12, for the month of November. I'm learning a lot and we're only at the 20th day, so there's a few that I really want to try. Tracy at Love Jock Journals, she did a little bit with watercolor. And uh, yeah, as soon as I've located my watercolors, then I'm going to try what she did. She did um, B, letter B. And here's the finished booklet. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And now we have the three different styles. One is simple, just a little booklet. It fits well into a journal. You can just uh, slide it into a pocket. A little bit more complicated, the accordion style booklet, but it's still slim enough to fit nicely into a journal. And I'll show you how I did that. It works very easily. You take your long length of paper, whether you have it from in one piece or you glued it together, and you begin by folding it so that you have 12 sides just like that. But that's how I began the original. I needed to make sure that both the top and the bottom were even, because when you're folding, they're not quite even. So I pulled out my guillotine cutter so that I could make it nice and straight. I have to say it's one of the best investments I've made for junk journaling, this cutter to cut things straight. And just the way it goes, it goes quite well. I want to trim off the f what will be the back and the front pa pages. They're a little ratty. See how easy that works so nicely. It's very satisfying to cut with that cutter. There we are. There's the inside of our booklet. Now I'm looking for a piece of paper that can go first on one side and then on the back. I pull out one piece of paper that I don't really care for, change my mind, and I go back to find one that I do like. It's one of my favorite images from this set of papers. It has a little red truck, a little red car. And at first I fold the paper. I think I need less than I actually do. And then I realize it's probably better if I just fold it in half. And that's what I did. Folded it in half. And now it's time to trim that paper so that the inside is in the spot that 
I like. Pull out my guillotine and trim away nice and straight. There we go. The sides and the top. And I also trimmed the part where it is folded so that I have two separate pieces that are exactly the same size. Now it's time to put them together. It's important to be sure that the inside is in the correct position when you glue it down so that both front cover and back match up equally. I'm using the art glitter glue just to do a real quick and simple line around side around it you could also use glue stick and then I'll go on and glue the back part And I'm imagining that not everybody has a corner rounder punch. So if you don't and you still like less sharp corners, then you can just cut the edges off. I've seen Rachel at Roxy Creations do that often. And it's a simple solution. And there you go. That's exactly how you make the accordion booklet. Simple, huh? That's it. We have three options for 12 drummers drumming. Thank you very much for watching, for spending this time with me. It's been a great experience being a part of this collaboration. If you're going to craft along, don't forget to use the hashtag. Tomorrow you're going to see Rachel at Roxy Creations and a whole bunch others. We have the rest of November to uh, enjoy and learn from all the other collaborators. It's Lori at Positive Thanks Living. Thank you, and uh, I look forward to spending time with you again. Take care.